So welcome back guys to another video on Kids Coding Playground. This is the second part for the two player fighting game. So if you haven't watched the first part, then I recommend you to watch that first before continuing onto this one. So as we left off, we dragged all the code into the player one. So we really don't need the treasure hunter anymore. You can just delete it. We will make some new variables. We can delete some of them like the, so actually we actually have all the variables, so sorry about the confusion. So if you don't have any of these variables, I mean, we don't need score actually, we can just delete this. If you don't have these, we don't need level. So if you don't have any of these uh, variables, I'd recommend you to get them. So all these variables starting with player, like these are all specifically are specifically made for the player. As you can see, it says player one in the front. And I think his double jump is also for it. Yeah, player one is double jump. You can actually rename it, so it'll be easier to read. So is player double jump. So you wanna get all these variables. To make a variable for this sprite only, you wanna click on the make variable. Then there's these two for all sprites and for the sprite only. You wanna tick for the sprite only and type the variable name. Um, so yeah. So first we'll need to rename all these variables. So for this run costume index, we can change it to player run, player run costume index. Player run costume index. So we can rename this index. Player run costume index. We want to change it. So as you can see, all of this changed. Run player run costume index. We want it to be player run costume index because we want a specific variable for this uh, character because when there's a second player, um, then it might get confused. So we'll need two variables, one for each. So we'll need to change it to player run costume index. There we have it. So we got to change these. Each sprite will control its own set of variables. So we'll need to change this to player run costume index. Player run costume index. Player run costume index. So there's a new function when you just right click on it, it'll give you all the variables. You can just click player run costume index. Just right click on it and it'll show them all. Player run costume index. And change this. Okay, so now we have it all done for the run control. And one more thing actually, we gotta make a new format. So you put a join right here. I'll just duplicate this to so show you guys. So you join the, so the costume index is the number. The index is the number. So it would join the player one character so we don't have that yet, so we make it. Player one. Oops. Player one costume index. Player one character. Sorry. So player one character. So now let's press okay. So player one character. We should um, put it right here. So player one character, we have to set it in the beginning. So get a one flag clicked. You have to set, set it, player one character. We This is just temporary for testing, yeah. So let's send it, set it to NG. So as you can see in the costumes, NG is the ninja girl. 
NG stands for Ninja Girl, and the DRG stands for the Dragon. This is just for testing, so if you can just pit put anyone in there. So that means, this means NG, so you put this in, so you put when flag is clicked, click on this, NG run zero. That means it will switch the costume to Ninja Girl run zero to this one. So it'll set it back to the first running costume. So all you do is just throw this out and put this in. So now we have to do it for each of these joints. So you just do the same, duplicate it. You can just duplicate it. Oops, wrong one. Just duplicate it and duplicate it. But this one, instead of run, you have to be careful. You have to you have to put slide instead of run because this one's sliding. So you put slide, slide, and then underscore. So as you can see, it'll slide ng ng slide zero. So when I click on this, it's ng slide four right now. Currently, the costume index is four, and we can. I'll throw away this, and we can set this to WASD, uh, arrow keys, keybinds, because we'll have two players. So first we can set the left arrow would be A, right arrow would be D, and down arrow would be S. S, right there, okay. So that's all the editing we have to do for the run control for now. So for the start again, right here, we'll need to reset some variables. So we'll need to set a new variable called, is the double jump present? Like the, is, is player double jump? In the beginning, we want to set it to false because it's not jumping in the beginning. We can set, we can keep the run speed and uh, jump speed as is. The false speed, we have to change the player false speed. And player false speed is right here. The run, there's player run costume index. We'll change the run costume index to player run costume index. The jump costume index to player jump costume index. Jump costume, I don't think we have it, so we can just rename this one. It's player jump costume. Uh, we can just rename it and add index to the end. Player jump index, yep. And then action in progress to end, so it's no. Um, so that's the start. So for the jumping, today we're going to also make a double jump control. So we're going to, in the beginning, we have to set it to player jump costume index. And repeat 10 times. We have to change this join also. Take this out. Put a join. Get another join. So you join the player one character, player one character, with the join with the um, jump, jump, and then jump costume index. Yeah. So if you if I took this out, so you have to change this to player jump costume index. Forgot about that. So player jump costume index. So if I were to take this out and click it, it would be ng jump zero. So that seems right. Now we have to change this to player jump costume index. Uh, right there. And yeah, this is right. So now we can work on the double jump. So we'll get a if W, if the W key is pressed. So we already have it right here, so we can just change it to W. So W, we'll take out the jump control for right now. We'll add some code and then we'll add the jump control back at the end. So jump control is just calling this chunk of code right here. So we'll get an if else statement. So if it's touching, we'll need an and 
So if it's touching the platforms, yeah, we can just duplicate this. If it's touching the platforms and that, or we can get another or statement. Because sometimes when you jump, you can get through the first layer. So touching this or just duplicate it and you can just go here. Sometimes when you jump, it should be the first first layer, the white layer, cream layer. So if it's touching either of those, then set the player fall speed to jump speed. So it'll set the fall speed to the jump speed so you can jump again in the air. Set the player fall speed, player fall speed to the jump speed. So this is the first jump when you're on the platform. Then now we'll make the double jump. Get an if then statement. And get an equal equal operator. So if the is double player jump is the player double jumped is equal to false. False. Then we can set the player fall speed. Set the player fall speed to the jump speed. Just duplicate this, put it under here. Set the play, set is player double jump. Is player double jump to true. Cause this is this. So this is the second time in the air. So this defines, it lets you double jump. And then we add the jump control back on the bottom. So now, right now we are not done with it. So we still have some code to add, like the gravity code. The simulate gravity, we have to change some variables as well. So the fall speed, we have to change it to player fall speed. speed. And this fall speed also has to be changed to player fall, fall speed. Sorry. Um, this has to be changed to the player fall speed. And we'll add some code to the bottom, get an if then statement. So this is to prevent the bug. So that when the ninja girl jumps up, double jumps, and it's touch and it goes up here, it'll prevent it from keep on double jumping because it's touching the cream color. So we'll get an if then statement. If it's not not touching touching the brown color, we can just duplicate it from here. Sorry. Not touching that brown color, then set the is player double jump. Back to the false. Yes. Set the player is player double jumped back to false. To reset it. Oops. False. So now we have the last. So right here, we have to change this. So this we'll have to add an or statement to this. We can add it. So this is just to double check it. So if the fall speed is less than or equal to zero, if the fall speed is less than or equal to, to zero, fall speed is less than or equal to zero, then we have to get a join, get a join. We join the player one character, the player one character with the idle one, zero. So when you click on this, it's ng idle zero. So set it back to ng idle zero. And then when you're moving, when you're done moving, when flag clicked, we have to set this to player fall speed. And I believe that is it. Now we will delete some useless variables that we don't need. So we forgot to change one last part. We were supposed to change this to player fall speed. Scroll, scroll down, player fall speed. So now, let's, I'm gonna, we're gonna check if there's any more that we need to change. I don't think there's any more. And we have to change those. Oh yeah, we have to still change these. Player fall speed. Duplicate it. And we'll put it there. We can delete this. 
I forgot these. Now we can delete the fall speed. We don't need that. And we can delete the idle costume index. What else can we delete? I think we can delete the jump costume index. Jump. We can keep the jump speed. Keep. We can keep everything with the player in front. We can delete the run costume index because we already have the player one. So that's all the variables we need. We deleted some useless ones. Now we can just uncheck all these variables so you guys can see. Make it full. So now when you slide, it switches back to the normal thing. You can double jump. I hope this all works to you guys. If it's not, then you probably did something wrong. You can slide. You can, you can double jump. You can walk. So earlier I forgot to record the sliding, not the not sliding for the dragon. So I will quickly finish that up right now. So all we want to do is just get an if then statement. Put the um, not, put a not. So if the dragon, so we need equal. So if not equal to the player one character is equal to the DRG, which is the dragon. So if it's not equal to the dragon, then we will wrap this around here. So it only if it's not equal to the dragon, it will be able to slide. So yeah, this is the code. So as you can see, when you play it, the dragon cannot slide now. I'm holding down the S key, it is not sliding. You can still double jump. Everything is still functioning correctly. So thank you guys for watching, and please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video, part 3 of the two-player fighting game. Thank you guys for watching.